word Yahushua. And before getting into it, I really wanted to start by presenting this video explaining that it's not about people that the problem exists because people are easily misled as well as led by sometimes their own self-deception, sometimes good intentions, sometimes bad, sometimes ignorance, sometimes intelligence. All of those things can lead a person astray when they don't pay attention to the details of what they're doing, nor really take the time to understand why they might be so obsessed with something that's wrong that they dispossess themselves from everyone else by claiming to be the only ones right when they think everyone else is wrong. So I don't have anything personal against a person that may have got caught up into this new throwing his word out there, Yahushua and Yahushua and all these kind of bizarre, <laughs> and it is, ways of trying to say Jesus or trying to say Yeshua. And I'm sure you've heard the word Yeshua before. It's, quite frankly, Hebrew for Jesus. So is Yehoshua. Which is for Joshua, which is the same as Jesus. Now, in the expose, we're going to present a lot of information. You might not have known that it is okay to say Jesus, and you might not have known it's okay to say Yehoshua. You might not have known it's not okay to say Ye Yehoshua, or why it's such a big deal. Because, you see, there was a time when the anti-missionaries tried to call Yeshua, Yesha, which was a kind of a slang Hebrew, almost Yiddish word, but anyways, it was a slang that was kind of a derogatory term for Jesus. And at the time, again, a great number of people, myself included, did an expose and revealed, you know, the anti-missionary idea that was trying to permeate the web and, you know, a lot of people's use of Yeshua. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out this expose, and quite frankly, all you have to do is Google it. I mean, if you Google Yahushua, you'll find that you can't find this word in existence in Hebrew. There is no word there. You have to go to a site that's put out by the people that believe in Yahushua to make that word fit and then to interpret it for you and to explain it in great length and detail why you have to use that word for God and why you can't use any other word. That should give you a hint. But you'll also find that if you look at Google, other sites that warn you about sacred namers using that name, using that word, and how false it is. The Jehovah's Witnesses, when they tried to change the Bible to fit their theology, tried to insert just one letter in the Bible, and it would have changed the whole meaning of the scriptures. And one letter was an A. Because they wanted to change the Gospel of John that was declaring, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. Not was, as the Jehovah's Witnesses say, was a God. One letter. Jesus said not one jot, which is a little mark, or tittle, which is another little mark, that really changes Hebrew completely, would be taken away from the law. 
And he knew what he was saying. Because you see, what the Yahushua people try to do is they try to add a vowel. They try to add something in there that isn't there. They try to create a new language that doesn't exist. And then they try to claim that it's Hebrew. You could ask a Jew. <laughs> Any Jew will tell you. That's pretty easy. You could ask a rabbi. The rabbis will tell you. Or you could pretend that it's not a big deal, except for when you start using the word Yahushua, it's interesting how you begin to get more and more material that says Yahushua. And as you look closer at that material, if you play these videos all the way to the end, or you read the comments, or you read the statements that people that are Yahushua's or Yahuis, or whatever they are, they begin to open up a little more and tell you, you can't be saved unless you use that word. And that's where the danger lies. So the expose isn't meant to really hurt anybody's feelings. You know, I mean, if you've gotten some pretty cool looking prophecy junk, hey, there's lots of prophecy sites. The problem is, is that you got a cult out there that's trying to push it. So you're going to see a lot of money spent in one area because they took a lot of money in. And whether it came from the House of Yahweh or the Seventh-day Adventists or the Sacred Namers or some other fringe messianic group, now some Pentecostal groups are catching on to it and they want to make up their own. So they've, instead of saying Yahushua, they went Yahuhushua. So they added a hoo-hoo in it. Where do they get this stuff? I don't know. I do know because I've seen it growing and I know where it came from. And because I do, presenting the material on the web, on my site, and in Prophecy Research and Development to let you know that you're going to get bombarded by it more so. But you need to take a stand. You need to kind of like back off it because it's trying to deceive you. The spirit of Antichrist, we are told, has gone out into the world. Now, the spirit of Antichrist, the word Antichrist means Messiah, you know, anti-Messiah or false Messiah. And the word Messiah means anointed one. So there's a lot of false anointed ones or people that are running around with a false anointing claiming they've got a new revelation for you. They've got a brand new prophecy. We have discovered the name of God in scriptures that aren't in the Bible. But the amazing thing is, is even when you look there, it's not there either. But they tell you it is. Or they say, it's hinted at, but, you know, if you take any of the proofs of Scripture that we have in the Bible, it's not there either. As a matter of fact, when you really sat down and decided to prove whether or not this word exists, it gets a little embarrassing. Because once you start down the trail of trying to prove it, it really begins to show how dumb and silly it really is. Because frankly, there isn't one shred of evidence for it to stand on. Sorry to have to be the one to say it. And I know that there's people that are going to get their feelings hurt over it. But I would rather you know the truth of who Jesus is. <laughs> what his name is. Which is Jesus. You can say Jesus, it's fine. Jesus will respond. You could say Yehoshua or Yeshua, but you can't make up a new word and expect him to answer. Sorry. It just doesn't work that way. You can't just call God Allah and expect to get the same God. It doesn't work that way. Neither will it work for Yeshua when you call him Yahushua. It just doesn't work that way. Sorry. The word was invented, and there's kind of a devilish power behind it, kind of a sneaky thing about shoving it down people's throats with adding it to the excitement of prophecy and the newness of, ooh, it's Hebraic. So under the cover of Messianic, they try to throw it on top of your desire to know and care about Jewish people or to care about Hebrew. And sadly, you've been deceived. 
When people go to Israel, Aisha Torah is pretty famous for this. They started it. It was called the anti-missionary movement. Was that they began a while back with Jews for Jesus to attack those ministries that were prevalent to converting Jews to Christianity. They began to work overtime, so to speak, accumulating monies and getting special interest groups to work inside of Judaism to stop this massive migration of Jews coming to Jesus. Wow, imagine that. Finding Messiah and they worked their way to stop that from happening. But then they saw this messianic thing, so they also began to pass out what's called misinformation. It's a way of adding stuff to different places to cause people to isolate and segregate and separate themselves so they're no longer powerful and effective. And it works. <laughs> Government tried it. Religion tries it. And now we have, after the big heyday of, wow, the last, what was it called? Left Behind series was so popular that, wow, they gave equal time to trying to market and to sell an alternative to last Left Behind series. And that was with the Seventh-day Adventists. And they began to jump on the bandwagon and saying, oh, let's do prophecy. And so they went big into it and began to sell books and push tapes and to push on the evangelistic end of websites, graphics, phenomenal new ideas because their membership had gone down. But when they started saying messianic, their membership went up. Oh, let's get involved. Until they start telling you that instead of having a Sabbath, if you want to enjoy it, you know, and rest, relax, whatever, you can't do Sunday, but you have to do Saturday. And they try to make salvation a part of that. And they become a cult, as Walter Martin called it, because salvation is not mandatory in keeping the law. In fact, if you read Hebrews, if you try to keep the law, you will be judged by the law. It's just what it says. You'll have to figure that one out. But I wanted to warn you ahead of time that I don't have anything personal against people that are involved in it. They're deceived. They're wrong. There's no doubt about it. It's obvious in Scripture. All they have to do is ask Jesus. I know personally that every single person that I've said, look, you ask God and then come back and tell me. Because I have no problem with you going to God. Matter of fact, I have no problem with anyone, anywhere, at any time, getting on their knees, talking to God personally, and hearing God speak audibly and saying to me, God told me this is true. And I'll say, good. Go in peace. Be blessed, my brother. <laughs> Whatever God told you to do, <laughs> That you should do, because I wasn't there. If he told you to do that, you could do it. But in the same like manner, all I can tell you is what he tells me. What he may tell you, I have no idea, because I don't know what he's got in store for you, and I don't know who you're talking to. I pray it be the Lord God Almighty, and it might be. But you see, people don't come back to me and tell me these things. They want to justify their position by telling me these ideas they have about Scripture. We call it fallacy when you try to make a point by going from A to B to C to D, only you skip a few points in between and you say, well, this means this and this means this and this means this, and because those mean that, it has to be this. Well, if you go to the beginning and you prove the first point wrong, you sure can't prove the last point right, can you? And that's where it all falls apart, as you'll see in the expose. You have a Bible complete. It's perfect for you. You have a God who is perfect. He is complete in himself. We are the ones who are incomplete. And God said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who braideth not, forgiveth not, 
all men liberally. For me, in some ways, that could be a Google. You know, go on the web and Google it. Ask different questions about it. What is your Yahushua cult? What is Yahushua? Just type the word itself alone. Do a variety of things just to get an idea of how much information is out there. Then you begin to understand how pervasive the spirit of Antichrist may be to keep you going in a different direction when you could be complete in the one selection that you need. That is just to walk with God daily in a humble way, to talk to him about everything in your life, including this expose. You don't think that I'm doing this just because I like it. You don't think that I'm doing this because I want to. <laughs> Boy, do I not want to. But because it's so much a lie about the person I love, because it is so obnoxious to hear people tell me Hebrew they don't know, because it's so subversive to the grace and the gospel that Jesus gave, I personally find myself offended. And dare I say that once you see the expose, if you read all of it, you don't have to wait to the end to find out every, one, every piece by itself just proves literally Yahushua easily. That's not complicated. But as you see the volume of material there is, I would challenge you to Look at yourself and ask how easy it was to be deceived into it and how hard you're having to make the conscious decision to get out of it or to admit. And this is the most important thing to learn from all of this. Will you admit you were wrong? Can you bluntly stare truth in the face and deny it's true? If you don't come to the conclusion that Yahushua is wrong and it's made up, then I hate to say it, but you got something going on more than just this Yahushua issue. You got something else that's holding you back from the knowledge of God in a personal and intimate way. And he wants you to deal with that literally, one-on-one -on -one with him. Because it doesn't take a genius to see what these made-up words are once you get the truth in front of you. But what you do with the truth is the hard part. Because Jesus said, light has come into the world, but men love darkness more than they love the light. Lest they come to the light and prove and see if it be true what they do. So you see, there should be no fear of examining this word between you and I. There should be no hindrances of looking at the facts and saying, Ooh, I made a mistake. These people are off. Ooh, they may have had some good prophecy stuff, but they added stuff on top of it. Ooh, maybe I need to ask God about it. My one prayer at the end of the expose is that you would have done that at some point in time. Talk to your God about this issue and then set it aside and let him lead you in the way he wants you to go. And that's all I desire that would come out of this. Because the we will grow up with the tares. There's no doubt about it. This cult will continue to grow. This heresy will continue to flourish and people will be throwing it out as they find it in different places and at odd times and in weird ways. And they'll keep creating even weirder things like Aramaic Jesus or some other weird version because people will go, ooh, it's new. I have a new news flash for you. Jesus wants you to hear his voice. That should be exciting enough to try to get to that place where you do. Because I have. And when you do, it will thrill you to no end. 
But then again, to whom much is given, much is required. So if you go that way, dare I say God may require of you more than you ever realized he wanted from you in the first place. Father, I pray that all those who hear my voice and see my face, all those who call upon the name of the Lord, desire to be saved as well as those you have saved or have already written in your book of life. That God, the truth be made manifest. That your spirit come now and rest upon inquiring eyes. Ears that hear your words only and not those of mine or those around me. And that hearts be open unto the words that you would speak and the revelation that you would give to those that are seeking you with all of their heart and feeling and emotion to know the truth of Jesus and to not have it changed in any other way except to know Jesus in a personal, intimate way. God, I pray you be with them today as you open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to whatever you choose to say to them and show them and cause them to you in that most personal and intimate way that they have.